Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the 10th meteorology lesson. We're going to be talking about wind. Here's a nice little picture of a strong wind blowing the roof off an apartment building. I think there's a video later on in this uh, lesson on that. The definition of wind is the horizontal movement of air. It is caused by a pressure gradient. So a pressure gradient when we have higher pressure in one area and lower pressure in the other, the air wants to move from the high pressure region to the low pressure region. А Ютуб на Боже мой! Pressure gradient is defined as the change in pressure as a function of distance. A high pressure gradient means that the isobars are close together and suggests a higher wind speed. If you recall, the isobars are lines joining places of equal barometric pressure. So if we look at this weather map here, we can see these different isobars here kind of look like contour lines in, on a uh, topographic map. They all have the same barometric pressure along that line. A low pressure gradient means the isobars are farther apart and suggests a lower wind speed. So if we look uh, right here, for example, here, this is a, a high pressure gradient right here. Notice how close these isobars are together. So we're gonna have very strong winds around this low pressure region right here. Whereas this high pressure region, this would be a low pressure gradient and you'd have a uh, much uh, lighter winds right there. So we just discussed that the wind travels from high pressure regions to low pressure regions. But because of the Earth's rotation, it doesn't go directly there. It, it actually goes at an angle, and this is called a Coriolis force. It's technically not a force. It's kind of like centrifugal force. It's uh, a, uh, an apparent force. But if the wind moves from the high pressure region to the low pressure region and the Earth rotates, what it'll cause is the, uh, the wind to actually act at an angle. So around a low pressure region, the air tends to go counterclockwise and around a high pressure region, it goes clockwise. The way to remember that, or somebody told me how to remember that is think of a volume control on a car or on a radio when you want to uh, increase the volume. So high, you turn it clockwise. And if you want to turn it low, you go counterclockwise. Uh, the Coriolis force, this effect is most pronounced near the poles and at the equator, it, it's not existent at all. The air goes directly from high to low and then it reverses in a southern hemisphere. Uh, somebody told me one time that this is why the toilet, the water in a toilet, when you flush it goes clockwise. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not correct. I don't have an answer, but sometimes you hear that in pilot ground schools, but uh, I don't think it's correct. D uh, down low at low levels, uh, we have friction with the ground. And what happens is it slows the wind within 3,000 feet of the ground. And the wind is not as strong as it would be at altitude. So we're going to learn about upper level winds later on. And you'll notice that the wind at three, six, and 9,000 feet is almost always stronger than it is at the surface when we're looking at the airport winds. Uh, geographical features such as terrain, buildings, uh, et cetera, may change the wind velocity. The other thing that you may find as well is that as you go down, the winds back, so they turn uh, and they are and they're, they back, so they're at a lower angle, uh, a lower direction than they are up high. So if the wind's 090 at 3,000 feet, it might be 060 degrees at uh, 3,000 feet or at, sea le or at sea level. So this is a result of uh, when we're slowing the wind, uh, the wing down, we're gonna have low Coriolis force as well. As we just discussed in the last slide, uh, friction with the ground reduces the wind speed. And this is usually within 3,000 feet of the ground. The friction with the ground reduces the wind speed. However, the Coriolis force is still present. Therefore, in a climb, the wind will increase in veer, and in a descent, the wind will decrease in back. So if we look at uh, these uh, 
diagrams here, uh, the upper level wind with no uh, friction, let's say near the poles, we have the, uh, in panel A, we have uh, the wind going from high to low, and then we have this Coriolis force. When we have uh, surface wind, we have a Coriolis force and a friction vector here. So it changes the wind and it will tend to have the wind back close to the ground. And then when we have rugged terrain, it's even more pronounced. We have higher friction. And so when we resolve the vectors, the wind will back even more. So when the wind velocity, or the wind speed decreases, it tends to also back with its, uh, or, or be at a, a lower angle with regards to its direction. Let's discuss squalls and gusts. A squall is a narrow band of high wind associated with a cold, uh, fast moving cold front. We'll learn more about cold fronts in a little bit, but briefly a cold front is cold air advancing on warm air, forcing that warm air up and we tend to get thunderstorms. If it's moving very fast, it makes it very unstable. So you end up with uh, cumulonimbus clouds. We often have thunderstorms and, uh, and sometimes even tornadoes if the conditions are right in fast moving cold fronts. If you look on the top right, it's a picture of a squall line. Uh, you can just see like it's basically a line of cloud, probably hail coming out the bottom of that. Then if we look at a weather radar on the right, you see that line of red. The squall line. Those are really tricky when you're flying because you, you see that on the weather radar and it's very difficult to get around sometimes. Uh, it's just, it can be hundreds of miles long, exceed the range of your aircraft and you just sometimes just have to turn around and, and land um, in, when a, when a uh, fast moving cold front squall line is approaching. Let's discuss diurnal effects. Diurnal means uh, with reference to day or night. So during the day, the air heats and the wind increases and veers. And at night, the air cools and the wind decreases and backs. In coastal areas, we can have very light winds that are called land and sea breezes. First off, the land breeze occurs at night when the land cools faster than the sea. And in the uh, daytime, we can have a sea breeze that goes from the sea to the land and that occurs during the day when the land heats up faster than the sea. In mountainous areas we can have anabatic and catabatic winds. A catabatic wind is a wind blowing down, the, down a slope. This is caused by the air cooled by radiation at night uh, and so as the air cools it'll sink and flow down the valley. An anabatic uh, wind occurs during the day on sun's facing slope. The sun heats up the heats up the mountainside and the air rises up the slope. Topological effects from geographical features such as terrain, buildings, etc., may change the wind velocity. So here is an example. We have a wind going from left to right and close to the uh, this hill here, we end up with a bit of an upwind deceleration. Over the crest, the wind speeds up, just like over the top of the wing, it speeds up. And then on the uh, leeward side, there's a separation of the airflow. And sometimes you get eddies here, you get turbulence uh, in this area, just like you would have uh, turbulence in a river uh, when water flows over a rock. We discussed wind shear in our last uh, lesson. Just a quick review, uh, wind, wind shear is a sudden change in wind velocity, usually with height, can be increasing performance. So if you're flying and all of a sudden your airspeed increases uh, because all of a sudden you have an increasing headwind or a decreasing tailwind, or it can be decreasing performance when you're flying at a given speed. And then all of a sudden the go from, let's say a headwind to a tailwind. And so your airspeed will decrease Wind shear is often found near thunderstorms, and we shouldn't confuse this with gusty winds. Wind velocity is determined by the pressure gradient and other factors such as Coriolis of force and topographical effects. In a climb, the wind tends to veer and increase in speed, and in a descent, the wind tends to back and decrease with speed as, uh, because of friction with the ground. Squall lines, uh, characterized by strong gusty winds, are associated with a fast-moving cold front. A land breeze occurs at night 
when the earth cooled faster and a sea breeze occurs during the day when the earth uh, heats up uh, faster. Wind shear is a change of wind velocity with altitude and occurs near thunderstorms. Move on to some sample test questions. The first one, wind travels somewhat parallel to the isobars. What causes this phenomenon? So remember this uh, occurs because of the rotation of the earth. So A, gravity, uh, that's not correct. Uh, gravity moves down, not horizontally. Centrifugal force or centripetal force, uh, those are not correct. And D, Coriolis force, that's associated with the rotation of the earth. So D is correct. At the poles, wind will travel more blank to the isobars, whereas at the equator, wind will travel blank to the isobar. So remember at the poles, Coriolis force is more predominant than it is at the equator. So uh, at the poles, they'll be more parallel to the isobars, whereas uh, at the equator, the wind will go directly from high pressure regions to low pressure regions, so perpendicular. So the answer is C, parallel and perpendicular. During a climb, pilots can expect the wind to blank and blank in speed. So remember in a climb, uh, we have less surface friction with the wind, so it's going to increase, uh, the wind speed will increase. And because uh, it increases when we resolve the vectors of the, uh, when we include Coriolis force and the pressure, uh, the force associated with the pressure gradient, we end up veering, so increasing in direction. So the correct answer, A. A light breeze blows from the sea to the land. And why does this occur? So if we recall, this happens during the day. This is called a sea breeze. And a sea breeze occurs during the day because the land heats up faster than the sea breeze. The sea, the water has a high specific heat capacity. Correct answer, B. A bush pilot flies on the sunny side of a valley. Why might he do this? So remember, on a sunny side of a valley, they're going to be taking advantage of anabatic winds, which flow up the slope. Uh, the hot air flows up the slope. So the uh, correct answer will be D. The sunny side of the valley heats up, causing an anabatic wind to flow up the slope. The pilot approaching an airport suddenly finds yourself high and fast on the approach. Describe the wind shear. So remember, you're high and fast. It means you've got increasing performance wind shear. Okay, so increasing performance wind shear uh, you have flown into an increasing headwind, so the wind near the surface is stronger than the winds aloft. A is correct. That concludes this lesson of meteorology. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next lesson.